Okay, rust and corrosion. This is the last part of redox for you, and this is all about rust, which is a redox reaction where um, iron is being oxidized. And we're going to look at how it happens, what makes it happen um, quicker, and how we can protect it from actually happening, how we can protect iron and stop iron from being um, rusted. And this is entitled The Natural Destruction of Iron and Other Materials and How Corrosion Happens. So let's have a look at what it's all about. Now, this is, um, this is rust. This is where it happens. This is what's going on. What we've got is um, we need to look at what is there and we'll look at what is there and look at what happens in rust. We have Rust happens around when um, iron and stuff like that gets in contact with water. Okay, So what we've got here is a droplet of water on a sheet of iron. In this droplet of water, there is H2O. Outside this water, there is oxygen in the air. And in this iron, there is iron. So what I'm going to do is list all the things that I have, just like I would in a galvanic cell. I've got iron solid, I've got water, I've got um, oxygen gas, I've got a bit of this as well, but not so much really. As I said, you don't really need to write down the hydrogen and the OH at all, really, because they're in such small concentrations. Let's have a look. If I look at what these things here are on in my um, electrochemical series, I'll notice I have water here and oxygen here. And if I go down, I've got iron solid here. So what I can see is a diagonally down link between water and hydrogen and solid iron. So I'm going to get a galvanic cell and a spontaneous reaction happening between these two things. I can write down what these reactions are going to be, and here's my first one. Oxygen and water is reacting with four electrons to form the hydroxide ion. Then at my anode, I've got iron solid is going to form iron 2 plus and two electrons. This is the iron here going back to form the iron 2 plus. There. Now, these equations you're going to need to commit to memory. Okay, unless you can look at the electrochemical series and find those equations, what's going on, you need to commit these two equations to memory because this is going to be part um, of something that you need to learn, how rust happens. We get our reactions happening and our what happens is our products here, our iron 2 plus and our hydroxide ion, they kind of get together and they form rust, which is iron hydroxide, okay, or iron 2 hydroxide if you want to call it that one. Now, the reason we get corrosion happening is because of the iron being eaten away and forming our iron 2 plus here. And that's why we get corrosion. That's why it weakens the, um, the iron metal. If you go back to my first slide here, you can see this, um, this nice sword here. What this sword is, is a sword of um, steel or iron um, here. And you can see it's corroded away so much and you can see that parts of it are completely missing because that iron has completely formed the iron 2 plus um, thing. And you have that orangey stuff called iron hydroxide. So that's, there are two equations. We can write an overall equation for that, but I'm not going to do it here. You can, you can work it out yourself. Basically what we need to do is we've got four electrons here, only two here. We'll need to multiply this whole thing by two and then add the two together. And that will form your overall equation for your um, rust equation. Moving on, um, we're going to look at what makes this happen a bit quicker. We can just think about it. What will make this happen quicker? What will make it happen quicker is if we have more um, oxygen in the air. Okay, that, that doesn't really happen. It will make it quicker if we have lots of water. So in humid areas, it will, be, it will happen a lot quicker. So things um, around the tropics, you're going to have a lot more rust happening because we have more water to make this reaction happen. What you might not think about is what has to happen. In this reaction here, what we have to have is a flow of electrons. We have electrons going to flow through this water to form, go into the cathodic area here. Okay, To make this happen quicker, what we might need, what might happen, is we might have some salt in here because salt water conducts electricity a lot better than normal water. So 
having salt will speed up this reaction. Now let's have a look at that here. Rust is accelerated by impure water. So things that have salt in it, you're going to have increased level of conductivity. So you're going to have more rust more quickly. Okay. So areas around the coast are going to have a lot more rust than other areas around. So if you're looking at, um, in particular, what things are made out of um, steel, what things, you got jetties are made out of steel. So really, your jetties that go into your ocean are going to be more likely to corrode than your jetties that go into lakes because the ocean has more dissolved salts in it. So that's going to, that's a kind of thing that you might want to listen to, might want to think about. The rust is accelerated by impure water because of the increased level of conductivity. Rust is also accelerated by um, iron that contains impurities which are less reactive. Okay, and you can look at the um, you can look at the electrochemical series and explain why this is. If you go back to the electrochemical series, let's have a look. If we have water here and iron, if we can have things that are less reactive, okay means we're going to have less iron there, but the iron that is there is going to react quicker because we have, um, it, it's going to just make it happen. If you have things that are more reactive than iron, they will be preferentially corroded, so the iron won't rust as much. We'll move on and we'll talk about that in a second anyway. So the reason why we get more rust is we have impure water, or impurities which are less reactive. So if the iron contains some silver, all right, we're going to have acceleration of rust in that. Let's move on to work out how we can actually fix the problem. Now there are about three ways we can fix the problem. One is by painting it. Okay, By painting it, you're covering up the iron so it doesn't get exposed to the water and doesn't get exposed to the oxygen. And so that's one way of doing it or covering it in a plastic coating. You can put electricity through it. Okay, We understand that the reason this happens is because we get a flow of electricity from, okay, the, um, from the, the oxygen to the, sorry, from the iron to the, ox or to the water and oxygen. So if we put electricity through it, it's going to reverse the flow of electricity so it will reverse the flow of electrons, so it won't corrode the iron at all. So putting electricity through it is one way that we can stop rust. What we can do is coat it in a more reactive metal, and what will happen with that is the more reactive metal will react instead of the iron. So if we coat some iron with some zinc, what will happen is that zinc will form zinc hydroxide, but the iron will stay as iron. This is called galvanizing the um the iron. So if you have galvanized roof, if you have galvanized iron, that means it's being coated with zinc or another type of metal that forms a coating of the zinc oxide. So coating it in a more reactive metal means it will react rather than the iron. Or what we can also do is put it next to a more reactive metal as well. So if we put something else in there, um, what will happen is the the um, the metal that you put next to it will react instead. These have special names for them. So the painting it, the putting electricity through it, and these two have different names. It's in the textbook. So what I'm going to ask you to do is pause this podcast, go to page um, 294, and try and find the correct names. And then I'll come along and I'll come back and I'll give you the answers to that. So pause it now and then we'll come back. Okay, I'm back again, and now I'll give you the actual name. So hopefully you've had a read of this Rust um, chapter, and now we'll explain what these um, things are called. Painting it, putting it something over the surface of it, is called surface protection. It's pretty straightforward. Yep. Painting it, you're covering it up, you know, giving it surface protection it means it won't be able to react with the oxygen, won't be able to react with the water. Putting electricity through it, this is called cathodic protection, okay? Because what you're doing is putting electricity into it, you're reversing the flow of electricity. 
So what it does, reverses the flow of electricity, so you no longer get the electrons which are leaving the iron. Okay, so this is called cathodic. Okay, so cathodic protection is called when you put electricity through it. Okay, coating it in a more reactive metal and putting it next to a more reactive metal, they're both called sacrificial protection because what you're doing is you're sacrificing this more reactive metal for the sake of your iron. So examples of this is where you have um, uh, um, oil rigs which are made out of um, iron and steel. What they do is to stop these guys corroding and falling into the ocean is they might put a whole bunch of zinc next to where their um, supports are. And what will happen is the zinc will oxidize before the iron. Anything that's more reactive than iron can be used for sacrificial protection. What you'll need to be able to do is explain how sacrificial protection works and maybe write an equation of how sacrificial protection will work. So in terms of doing that, what you need to do is be able to say, for sacrificial protection, we need to use a metal that is more reactive, so lower on our electrochemical series, and therefore it will be oxidized before iron. You might want to show that on an electrochemical series that you have a diagonal down further, or a steeper gradient, down to something that's more reactive, say magnesium, than iron here. So the magnesium will be oxidized and the iron will not be oxidized if you put magnesium next to the iron in a, in a system. So that's how to stop it. Four ways to stop it. Surface protection, cathodic protection, and sacrificial protection. Okay, you need to know those names. That's about it for rust. So what you need to do is do some questions. Hear your questions of the Heinemann textbook and explain using full sentences and as much detail as you can with these questions on Rust. Take it easy. If you have any questions of me, please give me an email or talk to me in class. See ya.